In May 2016, I took part in an expedition of Alexander Kaltepin to Spain, and a lot of what I saw certainly places large question marks next to entire chapters of what commonly people call well-known ancient history. But out of all sides, it was certainly the ancient roads and the vehicle tracks on some of them that posed the most interesting questions. Let's start with Bokairend, which was, by the way, the very first site we visited on the first expedition day. So, in the vicinity of Bukairend, there was this old road, which at places looked the way we are told an old road should look like. In schools, simply primitive people putting stones next to each other to pave the road. But then it turned out that this was built on the basis of yet another, much older, heavily eroded road, or let's say partially built on it, because the erosion ate it up completely at most places, actually. But the few preserved segments were quite interesting. My first thought when we arrived was, why on earth would anybody cut out in the solid bedrock, entire road to start with, and then in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't look particularly romantic out there, just the barren hills, after all. And eventually it turned out that this is not the middle of nowhere, and this is not a road, at least the way most of us imagine a road. And third, probably, Nobody was cutting the solid rock as such, maybe. First of all, what I mean by it was not a normal road exactly, well, at least the old one has steps on it. I don't know if the relatively recent repairs, those of medieval or so-called Roman looks, also had steps, because those are also mostly washed away and destroyed, those parts, but the original older parts certainly had well-visible steps at a number of places, not just one. So either it was a wide pedestrian lane, or it was for vehicles that would seem somewhat strange to us. At regular intervals, numerous cuttings or marks could be seen on the road. They would be some 2-3 meters apart. A lot can be speculated if these are uh, traces of the vehicles that passed here or some uh, sort of... Uh, wooden structure was attached, so the road or the pedestrian lane was more luxury. But in any case, these marks show that something was going on here, and this was just not yet another very primitive, simple road out there in the fields. At good number of places on this road, there were marks that would be difficult to explain using our idea of what road is. They were neither steps, because often they were found on perfectly flat surface, neither they could be very convenient for the types of vehicles we use with wheels below. We saw similar marks besides vehicle track at another site in Spain again called Mecca. This site was somewhat better preserved. And then something very similar is again found next to vehicle tracks, this time in Belintash. A very large and very heavily eroded so-called Elf Castle place. But let's return to our heavily eroded old road at Bukairend. Immediately as we arrived, Alexander Kaltipin, as a professional geologist, immediately noticed and said these things, this landscape, is not fully natural. There was some sort of terraces or something else. Looking around, this is exactly what I saw, and uh, at that time I thought this is a bit far-fetched. But after walking around in the area for a couple of hours, I noticed too many marks and traces of intelligent activity scattered all over those barren, 
uninteresting looking at first sight rocks. For example, this is the road itself with its quadratic marks and these are steps on the side leading where? Leading to what is now barren fields, if not just even more boring rocks. At few spots along the road even parts of chambers were still preserved. But of course, for the official quackademics, it's much easier to turn them into trash sites, garbage depositories, instead of actually bothering to study them, them and the full area around, which was full of small clues of intelligent activity. This went on for a couple of kilometers, so at least there was a town, if not a city. What could turn a town or a city into smoothened stone slopes is a challenging question, and that is why they went for the easier solution, turning it into a garbage depository. On a vertical cliff in the distance, rectangular openings could be seen. Probably they lead to inside chambers. At few spots, steps were clearly visible for a couple of meters, but then they would fade away, deleted by erosion. This is how the tool marks on the side of the road looked like. I'm not a specialist, I don't know what could have left such long scratches. But at one particular location alongside the road where a rectangular cutting was uh, partially preserved, it really looked like as if some bulldozer worked here. One thing is for sure, no modern bulldozer could have reached due to lack of a road suitable for it. But also it is possible that these marks were left while this was still soil and later on it got petrified. More about this in the next episode. There was a short segment of vehicle tracks as well, proper ones, but not on the road. They were out there in the storm field and unfortunately were badly preserved. But even though a very small segment was preserved in between the two tracks, clearly the quadratic shaped marks could be seen between the two tracks. Same size like those of the pedestrian road, of which few kilometers were somewhat preserved. The next site was called Los Molinos. Although very little fraction segment of the tracks was preserved, for a few meters they were so crisp that it is really obvious that they were left in the mud. And that is for those who still doubt that there is a possibility that most of these tracks were left by many vehicles who were always following the same track on a stone, stone road. And that is very important because it proves that the vehicles were roaming on the face of the earth when these rocks were liquid, or at least soft. According to mainstream geology, that would have been many thousands of years ago, when we were monkeys for all practical purposes. 
So if the geological dating of these layers is correct, then it proves the stupidity, the ridiculousness of the mainstream history. And if the mainstream geological dating is wrong, then this means again that the dating of the extreme antiquity in the popular history is wrong again because it is entirely based on that wrong geological dating. An interesting detail can be observed on the Los Molinos tracks. These vehicles, sledges, or I don't know, cars with tires, whatever they were, they were not afraid, they didn't mind to scrape the mud on both sides. Here it scraped it vertically on the right side, some 50-60 centimeters high. This is the place. Sorry, it didn't come out very good on the photographs. And after a few meters it did the same on the left side. But in terms of vehicles, tracks to study during this expedition, by far the most interesting site was the one called the Castle of Mecca. The complex of ruins of buildings and countless vehicle tracks forming a mesh all over with the countless crossings, all this went on for kilometers. Out of all that, there was only one better preserved track, some one kilometer long. This is a panoramic view of this track from far away. And maybe because it was dug into the ground some 2-3 meters, maybe that's why it got sheltered from the elements and did not erode so badly as everything else. This is a side view of the trench of the track. Because of the safety created by this trench, there were some crisp spots. See how sharp are the imprints? This is one of the best proofs that these imprints were left in the soft mud and were not a result of many vehicles repeatedly passing over the same place, on a stone road. And because it was a soft ground, as more vehicles passed, they left their own tracks. As you can see, these are casually left tracks of a vehicle just there in the mud. They are not a result of regular traversing of the same path again and again. So there was this very sharp and sudden U-turn on this preserved segment, two or three meters dug into the ground. The vehicles we know of, modern cars or animal carts, they wouldn't go through this without getting stuck or damaged or at least badly scratched. But apparently those vehicles were different because their whatever tires or sledges on the sides were at the very end, next to the wall. So really not sure, were they very short or very flexible or simply designed to function in difficult terrain or maybe even dig as they go? The quadratic signs that we discussed at Bocai Rent were definitely here as well, but not all the way through the track. One would get the impression as if the vehicle or whatever engineering equipment was on these tracks, it was uh, sometimes retracting and sometimes using this whatever was making these imprints. They would be visible for a couple of dozen of meters and then they would suddenly disappear. But when they were present, they were always at this regular distance, not chaotic. Ah, and officially I have heard that these are animal tracks. Must have been some bird with uh, hooves, quadratic hooves, the size of uh, the leg of an elephant that landed and walked exactly in a funny fashion between the tracks for 30 meters and then flew away. 
It could have been also a flying crocodile. Penguins, polar bears or anything else from the animal kingdom would be suitable as well for inclusion in the official history textbooks or anything else as long as it does not have a hint of engineering in it. Besides the quadratic marks in the middle, there were also some sort of holes on the side, also at the regular space, and other, as if marks, as if strange bulldozer passed by. These particular ones went on for some time. They were also very regularly spaced and on the both sides of the road. Abundance of cuttings and even what looked like ruins of buildings were precariously near to the tracks, literally a couple centimeters away from where would the tires be, that is, if there were any tires or wheels at all. In a few minutes I'll show you why sometimes I doubt that these vehicles were either very light or were not putting all of their weight on the ground. Exactly as at Bukairent, every few meters there were cuttings that were going all across the road and even on both sides. They were like this. But this wasn't everywhere, we could observe it only on one particular segment for a couple of dozen meters. But it is entirely possible that such cuttings were present everywhere, just we could not see them due to the erosion variety of models of vehicles were roaming on the earth at that time, the width of their what would be tires probably ranged from 10 to 19 centimeters. There were plenty of things that is very difficult to make sense of. For example, channels, cuttings or I don't know what in the rock, looking exactly like tracks, connected the highways with the rectangular, the numerous rectangular cuttings that were all over the place. And this is a close-up of one such connection. Some people quickly conclude that um, they must have been draining the water from the road or even collecting water in the rectangular cuttings because they resemble water reservoirs. I am not at all convinced personally that any of this could be the case, because just look at it. If you wanted to drain the water out, the cutting should have been much deeper. But all of the cuttings were very shallow, so draining out the road, I personally think it's out of question. And I don't think these were water slide vehicles, because mostly they are... Tracks are found just in the open field, not necessarily in a trench, like here. And as far as uh, filling up the rectangular reservoirs with uh, water, first of all, they don't hold any water, I sincerely doubt they ever did. They are most likely actually stairways, staircases, we are gonna see in the next episode. But the strongest argument against the hypothesis that any of these side cuttings has something to do with channeling water is the fact that, first of all, they are very shallow, uh, at the places they just become flat and blend with the surface, anyway that could be an erosion as well, but the main thing is that they go up and down the surface, water will not want to follow them when they do that. And now I want to show you detail that impressed me really in particular. Unfortunately, the footage is very poor, but this, this uh, line of small stones, actually that's a track. Just one of the countless tracks that are literally all over the place. So there is nothing strange that there is a track there. The strange thing is that it ends at the main road. That's that on the left is the main road, and it really ends very abruptly. In other words, same situation like here, but at much bigger height, at least half a meter, if not much more, the track ends just nowhere. So if the upper track was uh, 
to be made later, it means the vehicle was very light and uh, maybe even flew away when it met the main road or it landed on it without uh, leaving any marks on the side of the road. So either it was very light or it was partially propelled in the air. Or if the track was already there and the main road was uh, made afterwards, then it seems that these vehicles were maybe even digging as they go. number of places we see the vehicle tracks in trenches and nowhere a single human step. So there is a good chance that some of these vehicles, at least some, could dig as they go. Another interesting detail was that the somewhat better preserved road had a high step on it at one point. So were the vehicles jumping over it or how did it work? I'm not sure. Also, this seems to be a subsequent addition to the road at the time when the megaliths were added to this site because I really don't think the megaliths belong to the original, the oldest site simply because they are not so eroded as the rest. So this is how this uh, step looks like, but even if it is a subsequent addition by the medieval folks, for example, to drive their ox carts here, and then again doesn't look like a very convenient jump for anybody or anything on the road. Medieval style primitive stonework could be seen here and there, and this is normal for all very ancient sites. Almost all of them have been reused through the ages, probably by many cultures each. Such primitive patches obviously don't match the original style and most importantly, if they were part of the original structure, they would have been washed away thousand times by the forces which leveled down the metropolis almost completely. And not only leveled it with the ground, sometimes even the ground is missing. Now what you see on the far right is the beginning of a very very high vertical cliff. And just a couple of meters before that we see the ruins, the right angles of uh, probably some sort of uh, remain of a building or other architectural elements, also tracks were finishing at such vertical cliffs. So obviously entire parts of the metropolis got just swollen up by time completely. Entire parts of the mountain going missing. And then this photo was taken as I stood on the main road, so to say. Parallel to it were, well, highways with many other tracks. So serious driving was going on in those days. And then on this photograph you see how the road looks like after the preserved segment is over. You can't recognize it as a road and boulders have rolled down on it. So don't think that we have a relatively fresh historic site in general just because I showed you few tiny well-preserved segments. In general everything is very very eroded. Yeah,
here at the Mecca Castle there was also a segment of road very similar to that at Bokai Rand. Here you can see it was a very short segment, just uh, 10 or 15 meters. It looks like a cut road. Both sides it's uh, cliffs. That's uh, what has remained from it now. But then it turns into a stairway. So it was a pedestrian road again. Or a road for vehicles, which don't mind. Staircase. Here is Alexander Kaltepin explaining that for the water to make such erosion marks on this uh, staircase, it should have worked for many thousands of years at least. The vehicle tracks of Spain are the same as those ancient vehicle tracks in the Phrygian Valley of Turkey. All of the characteristics of the tracks at both locations match perfectly and they are left in geological layers that date at the same time. And they are never, never found in geological layers that date to other periods, so most probably they belong to the same civilization. Identical tracks again in the layers belonging to this period are found in few other countries, but very little is known about them, maybe because they are not so well preserved or simply because they are not studied. The local Turkish historians and geologists who study the remains of the relatively more famous network of underground cities of Goreme, Cappadocia, Direnkuyu and so on, they say that they have found some clues that show a connection between this vehicle tracks and the network of underground cities. It didn't say what are the clues exactly, but this could be true because this network of underground cities is also very widespread in Spain, which is gonna come in the next episodes, and it will make sense a bit at least why don't we see any human tracks anywhere besides the uh, vehicle tracks neither in Turkey nor in Spain. Well, apparently the people were underground. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe in those times outside it was safe only for vehicles, not for people.